I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine. This is the Inspire 1000 art projector by Artograph. And since we've been working with digitally composing using the iPad and the smartphones, I thought I'd show you how to take that image from your tablet and get it onto a piece of paper in a really amazing way. One of the beautiful things about being able to compose digitally and work with your tablets and your smartphones is being able to edit on the fly. Now, in order to get the image from my tablet onto the piece of paper through the projector, you have to connect it with a cable. This is called an HDMI cable, and I've simply used an adapter that you can get from Apple that plugs from the HDMI into the fire uh, plug of the iPad. So all you need to hook the Artograph up to your iPad or your smartphone is this simple adapter right here, HDMI to fire. And the beauty and the power of this is being able to manipulate this image and to put it onto this board over here. And as you can see, I can shrink this down or I can enlarge it. I can put it right to the exact size I want, right inside my tape lines on my paper. And I'm ready to start tracing. Now, it's very important to know how to draw. Drawing is a cornerstone of painting and it goes hand in hand with what we do. There are so many websites and specialty programs that you can join on YouTube that are free. Some of them have a nominal charge and you must learn to draw. And books like Drawing from the Right Side of the Brain are so important. You need to understand the principles. But when it's time to paint, it's a blessing to be able to take that image and put it on a piece of paper without having to erase it and do what we love to do, and that's paint. So I highly encourage you to use this tool. It will improve your artistic endeavors exponentially. So now that we have our image all ready, it's been sized digitally, we're going to go over and I'm going to show you how to trace it and actually put some pencil marks on the paper that we are later going to paint over. This is going to be fun. So now we have our image all digitally composed and we're ready to put the tracing lines on the paper. I'm using a .05 mechanical pencil with a 2HB lead and you can do as much or as little uh, depending on the kind of painting that you want to have, tighter or looser. Uh, you can put as much or as little detail into your tracing, but mostly you want to get your perspective right and give yourself a real fighting chance when you get down to the places that you're going to need to know where the values are uh, to get the shapes that are really important. Now, I'm not going to take the time to trace every little flower and leaf. We would be here for days. So I'm going to basically just get an outline here but I want to get the, the most important parts, the black uh, wavy lines of the wings and the, the face, the eye of course, which will always be our focal point, even on a butterfly or a flutterby, and of course the antenna. So I want to get the important details down now and I'll let the rest of it happen organically. So let's start here. I'm going to just start by tracing out the darker shapes. And I'm not going to be too precious about this. Because I like to paint fairly loose, so I'm going to draw it fairly loose also. And using the Artograph projector, because it has a strong compression, is allowing me to do this in fairly bright light. It's really a wonderful tool. Now I have drawn this butterfly many times by hand, but I wanted to share with you today a wonderful tool for getting you to get a paintbrush in your hand as quick as possible. So you might be wondering as you draw, well, how do I know? where I've already traced. And you also might notice that I'm working um, from the side here so that my hand in the shadow of my hand isn't blocking my image. There's a feature on the remote here called blank. And it's just indispensable for showing me where I've already worked. Now if you're a type painter and you want to get photorealistic, you can really take this to another level. But again, I tend to paint pretty loosely and so I'm sketching very loosely. It's all up to you. These black lines here are really important. And I love these little styrations here. Here's a very important part. And I've kind of learned on things like legs and antennas, if you draw them too thick, they look very fake later. So 
I'm really not going to outline these a whole lot. And a lot of times I just use a single line because when I paint them, they get thick enough all on their own. Here's an important part. I want to preserve those highlights. So important right there because we all want to see his happy little face. What a beautiful creature. What a magical visit it was to meet this fellow. I asked him if I could take his picture and he sat there very quietly and it was almost like he was posing for me. So I'm pretty sure he was all right. We'll make him a celebrity. Now when I said you want to give yourself a fighting chance, when you go to painting something, if you can't see the lines, you can't see your drawing underneath it, it's a very alienating feeling. So where things are important, draw nice, thick, heavy lines so that when you put your brush down or you put your washes down, they don't just disappear on you. It's a beautiful little area here of almost a cerulean blue. We'll do some magic with that when we go to painting it. What an amazing creature. What a gift. What a privilege and honor to paint this. There's some more of that little blue in here. So now I think to myself, hmm, is there anything that I missed? Let me go to the blank feature. And oh, look, I'm missing all this and some pieces in here. Nice little yellow stripe, part of his leg. Here's a whole part of his wing that we missed. And we put a line here. These very gentle. And I do want to get a little bit of the detail of the flowers. Just to give me an idea. It's going to sketch us in real light. It's got to have a place to land. It's pollinating. Making our world even more beautiful. Now when we go to paint this, we're going to have some really fun techniques on how to do this foliage in the background. You do not want to miss this. It's one of the most common things people ask me about. How do you paint backgrounds? And I'm going to show you a really fun way to do it with great result. Oh, there's a little part of the wing that we missed right here. There's that whole wing. It's just about got it. All right. It's time to paint. <laughs>